Okay, uh, so let us go, we were looking of impurity com uh, contribute to resistivity we have seen last time, this is what we are doing it, we also calculated, I just want to quickly go through what we did last time, we calculated the available substitutional impurities or interstitial impurities by putting this thermodynamics and we then said that these are available to the n e to the power minus e s by k t where n is the number of atoms available in the lattice per c c. And then we also said if it is interstitial we declared it n i 0, if it is vacancies it is n v 0 and we derived an expression which n i 0 is 27 e 10 to the power 27 times this n v 0, this is all that we did last time. Today we start with quickly something more about it, there is also a possibility as I said last time Frankel defects are also available and they can also be created at given temperature. If n is the number of atoms in crystal per cc or per volume, n dash is number of available interstitial sites, sorry it is sites per volume and NF is number of Frankel defects per volume and EF is the activation energy. Then by similar arguments we have entropy is equal to K times Boltzmann's constant time ln of CNF. Please remember I am now looking for vacancy interstitial so both these are we are taken into care okay. And by same argument I can show you that by similar D we can write S by into KT and T delta G delta G by same method we can calculate the available Frankel player will be n into n dash e to the power E f by 2 k t where silicon E f in silicon is 1.1 electron volt. Please remember this energy is smaller, so Frankel player creations are not smaller, okay. Frankel player creations are not smaller simply because an interstitial site vacancy can pair very easily and move together. One jumps there then the vacancy is created on the back side. It is like electron hole transport. So this of course is not so important, uh, so maths you can do again, I have not done it. I just wrote down the final answer. The method is same as we did for interstitial and vacancies. Okay. Uh, once we say the we know the defects at a given temperature, we like to know how these impurities move inside a crystal and we are not looking impurities concentration in amorphous semiconductors and in polycrystalline semiconductors. Though we are interested at least in the case of solar cell doping of amorphous materials and we are interested in the case of CMOS polygates or silicon gate material uh, devices polydiffusions. However, as we say we will first look into crystalline structure in which impurities are entering. Okay. Now these impurities if they sit only on the substitutional sites as I said other day then only they can contribute to resistivities otherwise they will sit into interstitial site and do nothing except creating strain okay. Okay. Uh, if you are written down I may move further please remember this is uh, available on Google sites if you wish to read sometimes find time if not. Uh, very much uh, busy with other more important activity like TV, mobile and what internet. Look for this, may be interesting. This is a diffusion process has nothing to do with electrical engineering or something, it is a diffusion in anything, okay. So basically it can be available on chemical engineering sites, chemistry sites, material science sites, many places you can get same expressions because the thermodynamics related situation. Is that okay? So let us start how it impurities move. Please remember silicon has a primitive cell which is shown here which is one silicon atom is bonded to nearest neighbor by four atoms and uh, this is called primitive cell. If you have seen our unit cell there was a primitive cell colored shown by the corner one, the one which is just in interposed from 1 by 4, 1 by 4 side and three other this. So these are essentially is called primitive cell. The minimum amount of bonding which makes silicon atoms go is uh, silicon lattice go is this cell primitive cell. 
Now there are if you see primitive cell there are 5 voids they are arranged in tetrahedrally 1, 2, 3, 4 and back one side so 5 sites here are uh, uh, some are occupied but most have available sites for impurities not all voids are su substitution by something but they are voids available okay. So the one of the possible mechanism is how interstitial diffuses through interstitial so let us say an impurity sits a position 1 it can hop through to 2 to another interstitial site it can hop to 3 another interstitial of course this is random this is only shown one method one place but can have any random placements 3 can go to 4, 4, 5, 6 and maybe further ahead. So this is called interstitial diffusion impurities hop from one void to the other this is called substitution uh, interstitial diffusion even now though it is doing this process may not contribute to resistivity but it has more importance because it, as it releases the void strain releases and there is a possibility of silicon moves from here it can occupy another void and release a vacancy down. So the whole purpose is how vacancies also can be uh, moving with interstitial motion. Now in case of uh, silicon this date this is of course few, few lines so you can always see. Silicon diameter of interstitial void is 2.36 Armstrongs. What is the void? Essentially, I am saying between this the circle which touches all four or other backside one as well is called sphere there, and the circle which is on shown here has a dia of 2.36 Armstrongs, which means radius is 1.18 Armstrong. This is called tetrahedral radius 1.18 Armstrong is called tetrahedral radius and of course between the two constriction uh, between the two atoms on the constriction side the gap is 2.10 Armstrong. Since lattice vibrates at any temperature there is a lattice vibrations okay the lattice keeps on rocking as well as stretching more physics someday and it has some frequency which is called jump frequency or frequency of oscillations or vibration and typically it is 10 to power 13 to 10 to power 14 per second in different lattices. This is typical monitor number uh, derived from and measured from atomic spectroscopies. If interstitial impuritum has to jump from one side to the other it has to overcome energy barrier you cannot just go it has to cross some barrier. Now this barrier which is uh, uh, 700 to 1200 degree thermal vibrations occur with frequency nu which is given by 4 nu 0 e to the power em, em is the barrier energy it has to cross this much energy to come out you know it should get excited enough pass through barrier and jump to the next site. This 4 of course is called degeneracy from where it comes it is a random it can go this side, it can go this side, it can go this side, it can go this side. So it has a four possibility of motion. So it is called degeneracy factor. So typically the jump frequency is 4 nu 0 e to the power minus em by kt. Uh, uh, typically em for this substitutional sites, the barrier is something shown here. So if atom has to go from this side to this side, it must cross this much energy. This is equivalent model of energy I, I hope in second year or maybe earlier you might have done chronic penny model this is replication of that to some extent. So you have an atom here and it has to occupy this it must cross the barrier of energy em to reach to the next site okay. This essentially is what this expression shows okay. Typical jump rate of frequency is 1 per minute at around between 700 to 1200 day it varies a little bit but it is around 1 jump per minute is what the rate with which substitutional this uh, sorry interstitial actually jump okay. This is important because how many atoms are where at a given instant is relative to a given at a given temperature is some way relevant to know how many impurities are available where okay. I introduce some impurity in silicon where they will lie. So I like to know where they can at best go and will how will they go okay. So this is physics telling that there is a possibility. Now if this jumps 
impurities can come and occupy that void, so it, they are entering in. Okay. Now, this jump frequency, uh, why I brought this? There is something this, this equation is to do with diffusion coefficient, but maybe we will see this later. Okay. This relationship which I am drawing, I need to have for creation of constants, diffusion constants or diffusion coefficients. Okay, is that okay, everyone? Okay. So this is something called interstitial. The most important transfer of impurities inside a material is through substitutional sites. Uh, substitutional means wherever silicon atom is there, and if there is a vacancy, an impurity atom can occupy that vacancy and sit there. But it can actually jump from Thiller's position one. If it finds a vacancy here, so it actually may jump here. If it finds a vacancy here, it may jump here and keep jumping wherever it finds another vacancy. So, impurity can move from one vacancy site to the other vacancy site by a process called substitutional diffusion. This is most important diffusion how impurities actually travel inside silicon. Okay. That is what our aim. What are why are we doing all this? Maybe it should be very clear to you that my interest in doing all this is not just because I want to understand physics alone or I, maybe I am interested x of you I am maybe interested. But the interest part is how much resistance it finally offers because of the profile it gives. Because current is related to that R somewhere, I am very keen to know how much is the current I can get if I apply x voltage. Okay. My interest in electrical engineering is only IV and CV. If anyone hurts me on IV or CV, I am going to look into it. Why, 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 why cannot I do better? So I look into physics, I look into material, I look everything because at the end of the day, circuit must function the way I thought I had designed. Okay. And to do this, I must understand everything around that which, which helps me to improve. Okay. So please do not think this technology course is only of this side. This is essentially covering those areas which normally we do not cover anywhere. Okay, normally, I do not say. Uh, please remember generally vacancies are fewer compared to volts. So essentially you can say the jump rate of diffusion process will be smaller because the available sites are smaller compared to uh, interstitials. Interstitials are almost everywhere. Vacancies are need to be created by some energy to the power used by KT. So you are now two energy, one years you have to first create a vacancy and then allow it to move. So what will be now new energies will be, will we have actually energy creation for vacancy plus energy creation, energy for barrier to cross. So actually it will be two energy sum now which will be required for vacancy motion. Is that point clear? Voids are not to be created, they are there, but in case of in first vacancy are to be created. Once vacancy it can jump only if it crosses a barrier. So based on this same similar analysis, one can write nu is now 4 nu 0 e to the power En plus Es, where Es is the uh, En and Es are the binding, Es is binding energy and En is the vacancy creation energy. Is that okay? I just now said to create a vacancy, I need En energy. To move it, I need a barrier to cross, which is Es. Now silicon silicon bond by binding energy is larger than silicon impurity bond. Is that word clear? Two silicon atoms, okay, maybe first you write down. This part is most important to show that substitutional impurity diffusion has much lesser chance compared to void ones because there are enough voids, so many, many of them can actually enter which is very contrasting. People believe that impurities must be sitting first vacancy. No, first they may likely to sit to the voids itself or interstitial sites and then maybe move by seeing a vacancy around. Okay. okay, so this very interesting part, silicon is also, atoms are also moving because of thermal energy. Some bonds are broken anyway. But silicon silicon bond is very strong, very, very strong in case of bond strength. That is Coulomb's law if you apply the bond force is very high. Compared to silicon impurity atoms, the binding energy for silicon silicon is much higher. So it is unlikely that silicon bonds will be keep breaking every now and then unless you heat it very heavily. Okay, we use lot of thermal energy 
otherwise silicon does not break very, bonds does not make, do not break very easily. Therefore, silicon self diffusion going from one side to the other is lesser event, not that it will not happen, but lesser chance of moving one silicon atom to the other silicon side is very smaller probability event compared to impurities getting inside the crystal. Because after all you are giving temperature, enough thermal energy is provided, every possible mechanism can happen. So we want to eliminate saying that okay, silicon, silicon self diffusion is smallest among all of them, does not mean 0, finite, small compared to the interstitial and substitutional. There is one more possible, maybe two more possibilities are there which also are very low, uh, maybe this one. There is a possibility that atoms may move whether uh, vacancies or at silicon atoms and they can actually keep moving around nearest sites, okay. This is very interesting <laughs> which in very, very small probability that this atom of impurity or silicon jumps to the next site, next site, next site and comes back. This has a very, very small, this is called interchange diffusion, very, very unlikely event, but can occur. One in billion or even lower probable, but can occur, but at given temperatures higher than it may occur as well to some extent. However, which is the best possible, possible diffusion therefore, substitutional and interstitial together is very possible. Atom first come to interstitial site jumps to vacancy, allows another impurity to come to interstitial site, jump to vacancy. This vacancy atom may move to another vacancy, it may create another void there from where interstitial move, another vacancy is brought in and this is called cooperative diffusion. This is the most likely diffusion in which interstitials and vacancies go together to push atoms inside, okay. Is that okay? They both can help each other to actually get more and more impurities getting diffused inside the crystal. This is most likely event and has the largest probability, okay. I can do some quick calculation for this as well. Is that okay? Two possibility. So there are four possible mechanisms in which impurities can get inside. Most likely is the last one. But the first two actually tell you that together they will help in the fourth case, okay. Is that okay? Everyone? If NS and NI are concentration of available substitutional interstitial sites at temperature T, then the effective jump frequency can be given by available substitutional site into total sites into jump frequency for substitutional plus available interstitial site to the total sites into jump frequency for interstitial. This is very standard average method, available ones to the total with a jump rate, available ones with ratio to the total into that jump rate. This is the net possibility. If it is only substitutional what will happen? Ni will be much smaller than Ns, then you say this term will be negligible, only substitutional impurities may move. If NIs are much larger than NS, we say only interstitial diffusion, but in a given this, both are together and NS, NI also concentration keep changing as numbers start getting more and more inside, okay. So relative to, e for concentrate both defect related to each other is effective new. Please remember this is the most important thing which uh, you should understand. This expression is only trying to say both together can happen. And these expression I have derived from the average method, one among so much into this, second among so much into this. However, it is important to note that natural random jump events may not be very large. These are called natural random jumps, okay. Most of the impurities actually travel because of concentration gradient, larger impurities here, smaller impurities here and they try to diffuse through to make equalization. So question arises then why do we all do this if we know it is only gradient dependent? No, some of the uh, effects, uh, what I should call them, anomalous effect. I see some profile, 
none of the standard expression fit to that. Then I come and see is this material at this time has some other diffusivity going on. So, I look into which is the other mechanism which might have added or reduced it so that the profile should have gone up, but it is going down. Okay. So, to understand the actual profile which I will get in real diffusion, I like to model it and to model it I should know from where these possibilities can occur. Okay. So, it is not that these are very strong uh, forces there, but in case the profiles do not match as in the case of boron it does not match, phosphorus it does not, mostly it matches with arsenic in normal this, but all other impurities show what is called as anomalous effects. Anomalous means from standard diffusion theory it does not match my profile. So, I say why? This is more important if you are actually looking into very, very highly doped crystals areas or very, very low doped areas. In between, the diffusion coefficient, uh, diffusivity is essentially governed by gradients. Okay. Most devices are in that range, but so is drain 10 to power 20, some kind of pi and diodes 10 to power 13. So, in those areas, these diffusion techniques are very, very important, okay. other ones. We have two laws for now we will start with uh, this, uh, how the diffusion starts and I want to find at the end of the day, maybe I will show you one figure, what is my ultimate aim of doing all this, why I am so much worried. By some way, this is my crystal, maybe silicon right now. And this is my surface, I call it. And I introduce impurities. This is what I will do. Technique of doing it, we will discuss in techniques how impurities are introduced actually. Now, if they are getting, since there is a large concentration of impurities at the surface compared to what silicon it has, it can be p type, n type, smaller doping, higher doping, but difference. So, if there is a gradient, these impurities tend to enter the lattice and keep moving downwards because of the gradient it created. If I, let us say this is x is equal to 0, then if I plot concentration of impurities n x versus x, impurities getting down this is x down, okay. then I may say there are number of profiles, one possible profile is this, other possible profile is sorry, exponential, this is Gaussian, this is exponential and one more we shall, that is what we will start with. So, this n x is what I am interested to know, what is the profile. That means, from the surface the concentration will be normally very high, but as you go down the concentration starts reducing. Now, this profile decides some kind of resistance available to you because carrier available will be proportional to x now. Normally, we say dopants are equal to the electrons or holes dep depending on the what dopant. If it is n type, all the doping impurities actually are equal to available electrons not every one of it, but mostly we say n is equal to n d plus okay, ionized one, p is equal to n a plus ionized ones. So, they are almost equal. Okay. So, resistivity is decided by n and p, so that, that means n d and n a's. Okay. So, I, but if n d and n a's are not constant, that means there is a profile. So, n and p's are also of functions of x which means if I calculate the resistivity or resistance, I will find it is a function of x. So, in many cases the way I do it, I take a average of that value integral over that range and say okay, average resistivity is this, but in real life resistivity will higher high up and uh, sorry resistivity is smaller up or conductivity higher up and will go down. Now, this matters lot in a smaller devices now because your channel length is of the order of 14, 10 nanometers. Your diffusions of substrate are 10 to the power 19 kind of things, very thin layer of channel is going to be created. 
Of course, there are other physics effects called quantum effects, but some other day. Now, there, how many real atoms are available to us? How much really NX I have? Do I have a profile or is it uniform? All those issues will finally decide IV of the mass transistor or BJD transistor. So, this number is very crucial for me. How many actually? Okay. And this how many makes me actually go through all of it. Since I am interested to know NX, PX for my electrical properties, I am now looking into how are impurities going to contribute to this NX and PX profiles. Is that clear? So, that is the purpose of doing all this. I am not just doing this physics because oh, I am I like maybe I like it I, I keep saying I do really like it over the years you will also like it when you know there is no stress of exam you also start liking it, okay I mean this is natural okay okay so there are two laws in which impurities uh, diffusion can be modeled first is called fix first law and second is fix second law I think what I will do is I will leave it fix first and second law for a while okay I will first finish the impurities how because someone will say lab you want some numbers so I will show you actually how diffusion is done there okay so what we are essentially doing here is the impurity which are coming inside the silicon how they get inside and what is the profile it creates is what is our major interest of doing all of it okay. So, I start with something which is related to that and as I say time permitting I will come back to that. This is very interesting since our diffusion is solid impurities are getting into solid material okay. If it is a liquid liquid system which we have seen solid gets getting into liquid both forming liquid crystal growth okay. There we can as if you know stir it and uniformly dope it but that is not so in the case of diffusion in normal sense. So, we are interested in if I start this impurities diffusion from the top let us say on the wafer, what is the maximum concentration I can get at the surface? For your kind information maybe just a minute I will just say numbers and come back to this. The maximum silicon concentration at a normal temperature is 5 into 10 to power 22 atoms per cc. This is the maximum carrier concentration or maximum doping or maximum atoms per cc available to you. Based on this all density every calculations were performed or rather from the measured densities this number has been found okay for the lattice of 8, eight atoms in per cell okay. So, this is the maximum atoms. So, how much doping we can do certainly not 5 to 10 to power 22 because if it replaces all the atoms then there is nothing silicon okay. So, obviously it has to be less than 5 into 10 to power 22. So, this is a natural limit up to which silicon can get into uh, impurities can get into silicon that at a given temperature is different and this term is called solid solubility. Solubility is essentially between liquid and solid but here is a case we are talking terming it as solid solubility is that clear atoms how many atoms per cc are inside at the surface we will like to know how maximum can reach there okay at the surface that is called solid solubility. Uh, here is some type of impurities you know which contribute to electrons and holes there are some query about if there is a uh, why do not you buy uh, put impurities from the second group or even the first group then it can create two electrons or two holes three electrons or three holes why only one uh, kind of thing three or five we take there is the answer later when I calculate diffusion coefficients what will happen if there is a double such system appears. However, as of now arsenic phosphorus antimony are standard n type impurities and boron aluminum gallium are mostly p type impurities 99 percent now we use arsenic as n type dopant and boron even now is the only good dopant for p type okay. Yeah there are some devices in which boron plus aluminum has been tried but it is not a great success. 
there is some new methods are being tried there some other day about this. P type impurity concentrations difficult to get into the much numbers we will see this number soon. So here is some graph shown here this is temperature versus solubility. Uh, I can say this is my 10 to power 22 or maybe 5 into 10 to power 22 is the limit of silicon so nothing much can go below. Also the graph shown here arsenic phosphorus, phosphorus dip at higher temperature we will explain this is anomalous at higher temperature phosphorus why it comes out okay. So it actually reduces the concentration, boron of course at 1200 does not do much. Now one can see from here the numbers we roughly it is 4 into 20 for arsenic uh, boron but arsenic can go up to 10 to power 21, 4 into 10 to power 21. What does that mean? Arsenic is much easier to get in compared to boron. So what is the problem? Why solid solubility of arsenic is highest compared to boron? Okay. So here is some numbers which a sheet which last time I forgot so maybe taken from plumber yesterday and handwritten on something. If you are taken down the graph. These graphs are also available in plumber, so nothing great about. Of course, they if you see their book, I do not know yesterday I have mentioned, but there will be also two such graphs. One is this and the other is dotted lines for both arsenic phosphorus. Can you think what could be they? they? This will be slightly lower than all, all, all of them. Say arsenic 4, 4 into 21, maybe it is let us say 5 into 21, but actually dotted curve will be slightly below 3 into 21 or 4 into 21. Why these dots come lower than is that clear to you something? Not all atoms actually get ionized they may come in okay only at the substitutional sites if they sit they ionize which essentially means this is the actual number which are come in okay but the actual ionized atoms will be slightly lower than the available. So, Actually, our interest in that number, not even this. But for theory, let us look into solubility at given temperature. So, please look at the books. They will show you three graphs for solid solubility, three graphs solid solubility with activated impurities. Activated means ionized, they are actually sitting at substitutional side. In this, everything which is getting into lattice without straining it is possible. Okay. Is that okay? So, this fact has to be understood by that number is slightly smaller and in our calculation when I will give you graph I will give you both I mean that full graph you will have to always choose the dotted curves which are activated numbers for the concentration is that point clear you must use dotted curves instead of the hard ones because dotted are activated impurities activated means these are the ones only contributing to resistivity and we are only interested in currents and voltages no more. So, we will say okay, where are dotted, okay. so we will see that graph later. Okay. Whenever impurities try to get into a lattice, it try to even if we say strain free, it does strain the lattice. Okay. For example, when the even if interstitial site between the two atoms going, there is a constriction there. So, it has to pump in, okay. it has to push in. Okay. Now, that means some of the earlier atoms may not retrace back to its original position, but may be slightly moved. Okay, so, there is a partial strain which always exists even if we do room temperature. The problem is we recover it by some other technique that is another issue. For a silicon we have actually discussed other day that or just now that there is a tetrahedral radius which is 2.36 Armstrong was dia. So, 1.18 Armstrong was the radius. For each such atom size of phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, I think they are given boron, aluminum, gallium, indium, gold, silver, all impurities, we have actually found out the tetrahedral radius for their lattices. Okay. Now, one of these impurities may come into silicon. This is, is that clear? They are impurity atoms, they also have a crystalline structure, many of them, not necessarily all of them. So, if their tetrahedral radius is known, and I know silicon tetrahedral radius. Now we say if the tetrahedral radius of silicon matches with tetrahedral radius of that impurity, then the maximum will come because they will not strain anything. Okay. 
same size. If the size is bigger, the smaller atoms and one is bigger sitting there, so it will strain the lattice anyway. If it is smaller, it will inverse stress it. Okay. So if the size tetrahedral radius of an impurity is not identical to silicon or tetrahedral radius, then it strains the lattice marginally, but it does. This is essentially called replaced by. Uh, this is explained by a term called misfit factor. Okay, is it called? Is it is called misfit factor. So maybe I'll write down in that sheet. Okay, I'll come back and this number maybe I'll read out for you so that you know. For silicon, R zero is the total radius, 1.18 Armstrong. Phosphorus, it is 1.10. Okay. Arsenic it is 1.18, boron it is 0.88, please note, I, when I say please note down, silicon 1.18, phosphorus 1.10, boron, arsenic 1.18, boron 0.88, aluminum 1.026, gallium 1.26, aluminum 1.026, in gallium 1.26, indium 1.44, largest atom around. Okay, but gold and this is even higher. Gold is 1.5 Armstrong, silver is 1.52 Armstrongs. Is that okay? And the difference between R0 to this tetrahedral radius or other is called misfit factor epsilon. Is that clear to you? The difference between silicon tetrahedral radius and impurity tetrahedral radius is called misfit factor. It can be plus or minus. If the impurity atom is a larger tetrahedral radius, it will be minus. If it is smaller, it is positive. So, what I define, you have noted these numbers you noted down, and what I wrote. Okay. What I am now saying you that I, I have a formulation which says r is equal to r0 1 plus minus epsilon where epsilon is called misfit factor. You subtract 1.18 from each impurity atoms, uh, each impurity atom tetrahedral radius and find out what is epsilon for each, r0 is for silicon, r is the tetrahedral radius for impurities. If epsilon is 0, when this can occur? When R is R0. If R is R0, epsilon is 0. Which impurities according to you has? Arsenic. Since arsenic has the least misfit factor, the possibility of number of atoms of arsenic getting in silicon is the highest at solid solubility. Is that point clear? Because they do not strain the lattice compared to others. Next will be who, which depending on of course uh, 0 0.068 is for phosphorus, so next best may be phosphorus. Boron has 0.254 as epsilon difference, Okay, so it will have a smaller number. So do you get the point that graph which I showed you is somewhere related to misfit factor, is that point clear why those graph? arsenic shows highest concentration followed by phosphorus followed by boron and if you plot for all the impurities you will correspondingly get solid solubility curves for all impurities. But since we are only interested into silicon IC process, I am restricting only these three but please remember in case I need it I will get those values for my other impurities as well. So this fact that misfit factor decides solid solubility should be understood that why people actually say that as arsenic is the best n type dopant or best dopant in silicon. But if you have gallium arsenide lattice it may have different kinds of misfit factors for different impurities there okay of course there is no by the way which is the easiest doping this in the case of gallium arsenide silicon. Okay, some other time. Okay. Of course, I am not teaching gallium arsenide, but my own PhD work was on gallium arsenide 35 years, 40 years ago. So I still enjoy that. Okay. And as I said, those days when I shifted to silicon, 
uh, my guide was saying that you know this is the area of future, why are you shifting? Then I told him, he said, oh, future never comes. So I would prefer to be in present, so I will shift to silicon. So my choice was not bad uh, as far as technology goes, but if I would have continued, I would have published many more poor papers because silicon there were 20 lakh people working, gallium and 100. So I should have been there, but did not realize that I will become teacher. Maybe I should have become the otherwise. Though I did try work in industry as well as R&D labs before I became teacher. That is why I said technology was my first jobs, wherever I did for 15 years. So I understand more of technology compared to many, not because they are smarter, they are they know more knowledgeable, maybe. Many of them have been taught by me, so maybe more better than me. But simply because I enjoy. Okay. And after a great fight with my head, you are the sufferers for that, but I forced them to give me this course for the last time because I said I want to record it once. Many of my old students who learned technology from me 20 years, 15 years, they kept on saying, sir, aapka ye course paper nahi hai. Main bula, okay, last time I will record it. Now, this was the old time case that students thinking has changed, student attitudes have changed, maybe I have also changed. So, things may not be as good or as bad as they were earlier. But I am known as a technologist in earlier phase of my career and suddenly I became designer for no good reason. Okay. And these days I am working on metamaterials and antennas and something else. Okay. okay. There are two laws of diffusion. One is a fixed first law and the other is fixed second law. As I said, we will derive them or I will leave it to the posting. The what is fixed first law says? Let us say there is a semiconductor bar, okay. It has two planes I have made a, a by root 3, a by root 3 are the two planes. This fixed law statement I am just showing a figure. This is the called cross sectional area, impurities are coming inside this area and getting inside, okay. This is my x direction. This is my y direction and this is my z direction, okay, in a crystal. Now it can be found by not going too detail on this, this will derive again. I just wrote, wrote, wrote down there, maybe I said, uh, J is called flux density. This plus, please use this word J, which is current density, but here I am using it, flux density, because over the years I have been using it. Some other books may use something else. What is flux density? Number as someone asked you, what is the definition of flux density? Number of atoms or number of particles moving per unit area per second, okay, is, is essentially called flux density. So, when someone asked us many years ago that why IIT Bombay and many other IITs only have electrical engineering department and not electronics, communication, communication instrument, some mixture of n of them. So I said, I, my statement was simple. After all, in all electrical engineering, we are interested in the electron transport and nothing else. Maybe hole is the additional feature. And it's only the flux density matters. If it is very high flux density, we say it's a power area, very large flux area, large amount of currents, amps, tens of amps, fifties of amps, hundreds of amps. Flux density is very high. If it is very, very small, we say nano, okay. In between, if the signal you need moderately flux density required for electrons motion. So, all areas are covered essentially by number per cc per second. So, electrical engineering is only electron transport and nothing more, okay. So, we keep working only on electron transport. So, this flux density is per unit area. So it is dn by dt, this is a statement, we will derive this letter, 1 upon a dn by dt, where n is the number which essentially we are saying a per unit volume actually. Impurities are coming and going from this plane n1 or 1 into 2 and there is a diffusion process, it means it, some numbers can go from 2 to 1, but there will be net numbers going from 1 to 2 if there is a gradient set. Now this gradient is, let us say if N2 is the number uh, here and N1 is the number here per cc, 
So, d n by d x is n 2 minus n 1 upon if this plane distance is a root 3. So, n 2 minus n 1 by a root 3. What is this a root 3? The distance between the plane, which distance I am talking is the Miller distance, we will see like next time. Okay. You have the planes, so Miller planes, so we will see what is the minimum distance they have along 1 0 0 1 1 1 other planes. Okay. So, if I do this, which I, I have done there again. Please just note down, do not note down because I am going to post this. I just wanted to rewrite because to show you. And then we define this new a square by 6, whatever term is coming here, as diffusion coefficient or diffusion constant d. Then I write 1 upon a dn by dt is minus d dn by dx or j, which is just minus dn by dx. This is fixed first law that the flux density is related to gradient proportional to gradient. I repeat the flux density is proportional to gradient. This is the fix first. What, why this minus sign? Gradient down, down okay, minus sign. D is the diffusion coefficient or diffusion constant okay. and we know diffusion coefficient can be rewritten as 4 nu a square by 6 exponential E n plus E s by k t for vacancy transport. So, d is equal to d 0, this term is called d 0 exponential minus E n plus E s by k t. So, first fixed law says j is equal to minus d n by d x gradient, that is our first thing. So, if the impurity concentration is higher here and lower here, impurities will move towards the lower side, it is like a potential difference unless there is a potential difference energy does not move. The only difference there is one can say it is not a random motion. In this case the way it is as I say probability wise 50 percent chance going ahead 50 percent chance, but keep going plus minus plus minus at some number if there is a gradient you will be farther away from this starting point. Okay. So, this is essentially statement of fix first law that the amount of impurities per unit area per unit time at the surface of silicon or rather when they enter silicon it will be proportional to the gradient it has set in. Okay. Now, that is the term we want n we want to calculate. So, we must first get j value some way and must get d n by d x relationship with that latter and if I, I can calculate n x that is what all that my interest is. Is that okay? So, for you this of course, you need not have it because I, I have written there again, but just to repeat in case I do not then I said I will show you where from fixed first law is coming. The fixed second law is essentially a statement I do not know how many of you have done your devices well, but hopefully so, but any other uh, devices is one there where we talk lot of it, but continuity equation has nothing to do with device. Continuity of transport of any fluid, solid, gas anything is continuity and according to the divergence theorem the d n by d t uh, d j by d x that is the flux density gradient is equal to minus d n by d t. This will discuss, this is called continuity equations. So, time dependent term is related to space dependent term this is called continuity equation we will derive this next time or as I say may post it. And if I use d j by d x is minus d n by d t, use this j here, differentiate j here. So, I get this equation d n by d t is d d to n by d x square. This is called diffusion equation. This is what we want to solve and then this is what we want to solve. Why? For a given time, impurities are coming in and also moving in. Is that point clear why this equation is relevant? Impurities are coming inside moving with time, but also moving in space. So, I am not interested in only n x, but I am also interested in n x t. But if t is known, I know I will only get n x profile at the end of t. Is that clear? That is what I want to do. So, this equation is my precursor of finding n x functions. This equation is what we are going to solve now and once we solve this only thing catch word in this maybe I maybe I have said it okay. 
here I assume d is a function of nothing that is constant, d is independent of everything, but in real life that is not so, d is a function of concentration itself, you can understand some way. If there are larger atom, the other impurities will require more effort to get in, okay. So, it is a gradient dependent term, okay. So, if n x are present that means d will be get affected by n itself, n is larger d will be smaller you take from me, okay, because they will be stopped by some other people, it is a crowd business, okay. Since d is a function of n x, d is a function of x, so if I differentiate j d d n by d x, then I must write this as a function of x and if I then differentiate I will get two terms, one related to dd by dx, the other related to d to n by dx square. Now this term many cases, this equation is not linear equation, okay. it is a non-linear equation and therefore analytically cannot be solved easily. Some people can do by linearization. If you are expert in maths, there are certain conditions in which you can linearize it. If you cannot, what is the easiest way? Go on a system and solve numerically this equation. Any non-linear second order differential equation can be solved by n methods, okay. Whichever method you prefer, you can solve, linearize it also by then come to Gauss Seidel, Gauss Euler, whichever method you can choose Boglibov methods and methods of solving second order non-linear differential equations. I will assume right now linearity for analytical purpose, but in real life the models which I will substitute in software for process simulation, I will use d as a function of n itself and let it take because there is a grid, I it will find what is n and find d there, why should I care for it, okay. But why I do I care many a times even if in a software when I write what is the criteria I normally put for writing good software? Time taken to solve is the major criteria in writing a good software. You may have very interesting software written but if it takes ages to solve then there is no point in using that, okay. So as much as simplicity you can create, so put some small model inside which may not be accurate but enough for that and lin partly linearize it, okay. So there are tricks in all modeling people, they keep using some tricks, okay, and then say, oh, so fast it works, okay. It works fast because you have assumed some few things. If you do not, it takes hours or ages, okay. So please remember, we will do only linear system because that is easy to solve analytically, real life, since this is not very strong term d by dx, dd by dx. So for first order this term can be neglected and you can use only first ones, okay. The first thing uh, we start is now looking into profiles, that is our ultimate, that is what we are going to do work at, okay. So we start with profiles, first let me say and then draw. Uh, this is silicon surface and as I say this is the depth in silicon surface shown x, this is the silicon surface, okay. This is silicon surface, this is the silicon wafer of thickness T and T is very large compared to anything, okay. T is for a boundary condition what will I say T equal to infinite, okay, uh, I mean sir thickness is infinite. Okay, so I have impurities introduced from surface side. Essentially, wafers sit in a rack like this and source of impurities are impinging on it in any technique. Okay. I assume and that is very important in time frame, okay, okay maybe we will come back to this later. Is that model clear what I am saying? Impurities are impinging at x is equal to 0 at this which is silicon surface and they will get inside silicon along the x axis, okay. The assumption is it is isotropic diffusion means y and z do not play, it is not true actually I should do n x y z or delta as the term we should solve for but most cases this is good enough. 
d n by d t is d d 2 d 2 n uh, this is our diffusion equation just now we wrote okay, fixed second law. We take of course this will come back this is a condition I am putting because I need to solve the initial condition I will create. I take a Laplace transform I hope 99.9999 people know Laplace transforms if not read it. At least communication people if they do not know Laplace transform, Fourier transform they will not be in communication next day bahar khada kar denge. Micro electronics mein chal jate hai, log match karte hi nahi udhar, to udhar chal jate hai. Okay, of course this is a trivial match, any network person must know it. Okay. Okay, uh, S N X S is equal to the Laplace transform of this is S N X S minus the initial condition N X T equal to 0 equal to D times D 2 N X S upon D X square. This is the Laplace transform of diffusion equation. I can rearrange this diffusion equation slightly. Is it okay? Nink, if you got doubt, hai will them. There is nothing wrong with this. Uh, Laplace transform seek lije baba, nahi ho to to aisa nahi chalega, life is very tough without transforms. Is it okay? I rearrange the those that equation again, I write d2 nxs by dx square is s by d, please remember Laplace transform is only for time, x does not change, okay. So, d2 nxs upon dx square is s by t nxs minus nxt 0 by d which is my initial condition term. Now here is my to solve this equation this is very easy to solve if I know this. This equation I can solve if I know this that means I must know my initial condition. So I have conditions which I impose myself and say this is my initial condition. So let us assume if you have written down the formula which is trivial. Uh, let us assume impurity source provides impurity at the surface which is x is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0. So that means what does that mean? Prior to t equal to 0 there are no impurity. At t is equal to 0 source starts, is that clear? Prior to t equal to 0 there is, but once it starts it never ends. Certain number of atoms per cc are constantly available to me infinite times. Just a minute before I show this, at t is equal to less than equal to 0, no impurities are impinging, at t is equal to 0 the available concentration is N0 which remains constant for all times to come. Okay. This is my initial condition which I start with and this is real life condition that is why I did it. Is that okay? At t is equal to 0, no impurities. We start the source at t is equal to 0 and some fixed number appears for all time to come, okay. Which means nxt0 is less than or equal to 0. However, at t is equal to 0 plus what I said I have written again, source of impurities at the surface. Thus, impurity source is unit step function in time as shown. Our next assumption, ye to ek condition lag gai. Why, what is the other assumption I need or other equation, uh, uh, conditions I need? X ki condition chahiye na, T ka to dikha diya, ab X ka bhi chahiye. So, how many conditions you need, boundary conditions? Second order equation need two BCs, okay. So, let us see which are the two boundary conditions we have, okay. Our next, the first assumption is, it is a unit source t is equal to 0 then it starts I have a constant source available okay or also called infinite source why it keeps coming there is no stopping on that. So either it is called infinite source in, uh, in, uh, diffusion or called constant source diffusion okay all the time in infinite or constantly available for all times okay. The second kind of BC secondly we want to see BC is so we say our next assumption is that impurity source keeps constant impurity concentration at x is equal to 0. At the surface we always get n0 as water number all the time. At x is equal to 0 this number is fixed. How much? n0. And how much will be n0 roughly? 
solid solubility because at that temperature the maximum available to enter there is so much. Okay. So, N0 will be actually you pick up from solid solubility graph is that correct N0 will be picked up from solid solubility graph because we know at that temperature how much N0 can and reach at the just below surface of the silicon. Okay. This value is defined as N0 because that is the number which you are constantly pushing. So, we say at x is equal to 0 this number is fixed. So, the first boundary condition therefore say Nxt0 plus onwards is N0 which is constant. Now, once I know my initial conditions, I, I know the equations which I wrote has a equation analytical equation given by solution is A s exponential under root of s by d into x plus B s exponential minus s by d to the power half x. This is the solution of second order differential equation which I have used. Okay. This is very severe, simple second order differential equation ka simplest solution ye hai. Now, the first boundary condition you have set here the second boundary condition boundary is what? First is x is equal to 0, where is the second boundary? Far away x is equal to infinite. Okay. If the impurities are coming in with a constant this, why should it become 0? All impurities will go there, na? why it should go 0? So, there is an issue, which this is what you are saying. If infinite source is there, the infinite end it will reach. Okay, because there is no way of stopping it, okay, it just goes away. Now the problem is if I put first x is equal to infinity in this term, what does that mean? This is positive, s by d is constant, x is positive, x is infinite, what does that mean? This nx will become infinite, but not I already told you diffusion is always gradient based. So, obviously, in infinity concentration cannot reach from N0 to infinite, that is not possible. So, what should be happening? As must be unequivocally 0, the first constant pre exponent must be unequivocally 0. Is that point clear? If x is equal to infinity, the first time will blow to infinite, that means concentration will reach infinite, which is never possible because impurity will diffuse down with the gradient, which essentially means the first term must vanish, which means As must be guaranteedly 0. If that is so, the second term has removed the first term itself, second boundary condition. Then I get Nxs is Bs exponential minus S by T to the power half into X. So, this is the solution, but what is still not known to me? Bs. First, As I, I because of this uh, second boundary, I just removed that, but now I must know Bs. So, I look into the real life situation. Let us say what it happens. Is that okay? Please note down. This is the solution. If x goes to infinity, this term blows, and since this term blows, it is again the principle of diffusion, and therefore As must be 0. So, the actual solution in this specific case is Bs times exponential minus S by d to the power half. Is that okay, everyone? The first, of course, initial condition I already showed a step function of source I have introduced. The second is I say at the surface the concentration is fixed that is what I said x n 0 solid solubility limit that is the number which is available at x is equal to 0. Okay. If you are not very satisfied say x is 0 plus because at the surface we do not know outside, but just, just below surface you can say or at the surface we say the concentration is n 0. If I know this boundary condition x is n x, so we can see from below that we do not know in the silicon there is no concentration okay x minus there is no concentration but just at x is equal to 0 it becomes n0 okay now this essentially means nx0 at all times your impurity source are coming anyway all times is n0 ut 
is that correct? It is a step function. Okay. So, if this is my second boundary or rather first boundary condition that at x is equal to 0 concentration is n0 ut. Why this ut has to be done? Because step. Okay. So, I have to because in Laplace transform it will give something. Okay. What will it give? What is Laplace transform n0 ut? n0 by s by s. So, we have to take care of that ut term constant by s. Okay. ut is only giving me that constancy. This condition is also the ki kind of boundary condition initiation has used is also called infinite source condition or constant source condition. We have a constant source. So, we have nx 0 s is n 0 by s taking Laplace transform the initial the second boundary condition rather first boundary condition. So, we write nx 0 s is n 0 by s equal to b s exponential 0 b s x is equal to 0. So, exponential 0. So, we get b s is equal to n 0 by s is that correct? Second boundary condition, first boundary condition removed A s, the other first boundary condition give me the B s is equal to n 0 by s. This is just substitution of x is equal to 0 in the equation okay. and therefore, the infinite source or a constant source case the solution of diffusion equation is n x s is n 0 by s exponential under root of s by minus s by d times x. This is the solution of diffusion inside silicon when starts with constant source at x is 0 constantly n 0. This is the equation you get for it. Okay. Is that okay solution? So, now I have the diffusion equation sol solving done for profile. This is my profile which this is in what uh, this, this is this S plane and I want to come back to time frame. So, what should I do? Take a inverse Laplace transform of this. Anyway, it is not so easy for you and you have not seen that function. So, do not try unless you have done a course somewhere or done something. Okay. okay. Taking inverse Laplace transform nxt is n0 1 minus error function of x upon 2 root dt. That is very important. I will explain the error function soon quickly before we leave. Can anyone tell me what is the unit of this? D is always defined as centimeter square per second, is that correct? Into time under root of that means it is centimeter if everything is. So, d t is a, root d t is essentially a distance is that correct root d t is essentially a distance. We will see d is a function of temperature d is d, it some temperature dependence. So, what does that mean? If d t term which is temperature dependent and time dependent. So, for a given temperature for a given time I have fixed root d t 2 root d t is that clear? So, now I know where the elect, uh, impurities are going for this time and temperature at every x. Is that point clear? D is fixed for a given temperature, T I have fixed, okay, I will do 1 hour diffusion. So, I know the time. Please remember everywhere we do seconds. So, 1 hour and a 3600 second. Is that okay to you? So, please 3600, do not mischief 1 there. Okay. okay, so if I plot this function, normalize n x 0 by n 0 versus y, y I define x by 2 root d t, I define y to plot nothing this. So, if I say between plus y and minus y, this is symmetric function, it is initial value is this and as time proceeds and at where this will all go finally, infinite, it will go to 0 at infinite. Okay. Same way this has reached to 1, actually it should asymptotic, it should reach to 1 asymptotically. Now, this function is called error function, is called error function. Now, for those last slide for the day, 
this is please note down this some data about error functions and since I am going to use this constant source diffusion very often I first want to give little expression for error function because those, those will be used directly by me in my solving the actual profile evaluations. Okay. Is that okay? Everyone note it down, those who wish to. Everyone does not, but those who wish to. Okay. Error function x is has a definition in maths 2 upon root pi it is an integral 0 2 upon root pi 0 to x e to the power minus alpha square alpha is any other parameter variable. So, you can write y you can write z any parameter. So, e to the power minus alpha square d alpha this is the definition of error function plots I have already shown you. Okay. If you see this integral which is shown bottom please see the last line 0 to a z e minus y square dy if I expand them in series, it will be y minus y cube by 3 into 1 factorial y 5 5 plus 5 into 3 factorial minus y to the power 7 7 into 3 factorial and so on and so forth. So, this series is essentially a e to the power minus y square dy 0 to z whichever it is or I should not say z, I should say y only. Okay, so this expression is a series, but I am I know this is the expression I need, and this is 2 upon root pi 0 to x e to the power is called error function. Error function at 0, you can take from me when it is 0, all y's are 0. So, what is the sum? 0. So, one can say error function 0 is 0. You say from the series everyone has an x term. So, x 0 0 0 0 0 0 everywhere 0. So, x error function x is equal to 0 is always 0. Error function x equal to infinite is very important. 2 upon root pi 0 to infinite e to the power minus alpha square d alpha. Now, this integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus alpha square d alpha mathematically can be derived as equal series sum of this is root pi by 2 is root this is a slightly diverging series and uh, difficult to sum up, but 1 minus p kind of equivalence can be done and you can sum it up. So, it gives you root pi by 2 exponent 0 to infinite e, my e to the power minus alpha square d alpha is root pi by 2. So, if I put here exponent this 2 by root pi into root pi by 2 means exponential uh, sorry error function infinite is 1 error function infinite is 1 and that graph was shown to the 1 okay it will go to the 1 always maximum okay there is few more terms we actually our profile which we are going to get is 1 minus error functions and that is called since 1 is the infinite part so you subtract rest is complement to that. So, error complementary error function E r f c x this is remember error function infinity minus error function x error function infinity is 1 this term. So, 1 minus error function x is called complementary error ok. You can think like this an integral 0 to x x to infinity ok. So, that is essentially doing the same job. If I differentiate a error function it is 2 upon root pi exponential minus x this is the most important differential we need because it is essentially which is this term coming exponential minus x square kya define karta hai it is a normalized exercise of now kya define it is a Gaussian profile ok. So, aap error function se Gaussian mein jayenge that is what exactly we are going to see this is in the next time. Similarly, if I take second order differential, then error function as x is my iska differential karo minus 4 upon pi x e to the power minus 2 x square x square. These are the error function terms which uh, you note down because I will be assuming that you know error function algebra. So, we will just substitute whenever any differential second order first order comes or infinite 0 comes we can just substitute there 
as it is. Is that okay? So, we have found from our diffusion equation before we quit that n x t is n 0 a complement over function of x upon 2 root d t. This is the diffusion profile which I got for which case, which is the case I had discussed today, constant source or infinite source, whichever book is you are using, some use infinite source, some use constant source. This will give always complementary error function profiles. Okay. 